Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad-free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, uh, well, we warn you. I'd sell my soul for a hot, delicious slice of pizza and some Sprite right now. <coughs> it turns out when you get it, the Sprite's well, going to be flat. Yeah. You gotta, Sprite's a little flat. We're going to have to drive a little ways. Yeah. To the crossroads, crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Robert Johnson. How you doing? Would you, I came to wish for hot pizza. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the show, Kelly. I need to know what you were laughing about right as we were playing the intro music, but none of us can I, talk. I, <laughs> Freddie said that uh, Vincent Vega was trying to shock Roseanne Arquette, and then Andy realized he meant Uma Thurman, and he just says Uma Thurman. <laughs> no, oh yeah, That's Uma it. Thurman. And, yeah, fuck and, it. and it just <laughs> it, it just made me laugh because I had the same thought, but I didn't like. Yeah, I just did yeah. something. Like, I, you know, you got to stab her three times was the that's, point. It's funny. We, you, how we talked about, we got to that because I was talking about how easily, easily, how easily, you know, you can die being electrocuted. Yeah, I didn't want to go back to that. And then I thought of the <laughs> adrenaline because I was saying, you know, you got to hit them with a board if somebody is yeah. being elected. It's my public service for the day. If someone's, you Robo-Cop. see someone being electrocuted, mm-hmm. remember RoboCop. And you just knock them away with a wood and like a two by four. I recommend something long. Or you shoot them with your huge RoboCop gun. Or you Either shoot them. Yeah, yeah. Or Red 209 comes out and ruins everybody's day. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing yeah. Kirsty Curse movies. We're nope, doing no. We're doing deals I know. With deals the with the devil. I know. I said Kirsty <laughs> Curse did. It, it's a short <laughs> yeah, game for dude. Deals with the Devil. We already you're did. You're getting uh, everything Alley. mixed up. We did do Kirsty yeah. Alley. You're mixing up the devil with Kirstie Alley and Roseanne Freddy? Arquette with Uma Thurman. We're doing Dr. <laughs> Pepper month. Uh, movies that feature <laughs> bottles of Dr. Pepper <laughs> in the foreground of a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any Dr. Pepper in Crossroads at all? Uh, don't remember. Probably. It's a. It was made yeah. in a very Dr. Peppery time. It did. It felt mm. like a Dr. Peppery time. It was more like Mr. Pibb, though. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're talking RC. about the mm. crossroads from the 80s with Ralph Macchio today. Yeah, not the Britney not Spears Britney. movie. Right. Not the Britney not Spears the local, movie with not the local church. our newest yeah. captain, Captain Pike from Strange New World. And not, and not the Bone Thugs and Harmony song. But what a great song. Crossroads. See you at the crossroads. Mm-hmm. What if they did a screening of a, they did a double showing of the a Crossroads '86 and Britney Crossroads at the Crossroads Church, and then they showed in the intermission they showed the video for Crossroads by Bone. Yeah. yeah, it's a Crossroads kind of day at a yeah. theater on a Crossroads. Oh, and it'd be um, um, catered by the Crossroads Wing Company. Bone, it's just a lo- bone, more local bone, stuff. Bone. I think it's covered. I think you guys got it covered. Yeah, Our wings have bones. All angles. Bones, bones, bones. <laughs> They're not boneless. No, They're damn. not boneless. Not at Crossroads. Although the last time I went there, they were real fatty. And I didn't enjoy it. No, no. So I prefer my wings to be crisped up. I don't want that gelatinous, slimy fucking chicken skin hanging off of it like a fucking blob. You're very animated right now about your chicken preferences. I'm hungry. I, I'm always hungry. We since we record this like right before dinner, I think I always come hungry. I'm always come hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you out with that. Freddie uh, always comes hungry. <laughs> I always come hungry. When I'm here, I'm family. Uh, <laughs> Andy uh and 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 has has coordinated our our get rich quick scheme. Andy bought them Powerball tickets. 
We're all, we, we went in with everybody on the Discord, it feels yeah. like. My mom, we're going to be rich. Yeah, this might be the last episode. <laughs> when do they, when do I they. I would still do this, wouldn't you? When yes, I would. The numbers. Uh, tonight. Okay. We'd have a state of the art studio if we won where uh, we become like a mega church, but it would be NOTLP stuff. Yes. Mm. Like we'd have a coffee, like a coffee shop in the studio space <laughs> and everyone would have to smile and shake hands like in a big mega church situation, but it's only horror people. But acting weird, and they're all like, mm-hmm. "Blessed be, have you seen the Vivich? Oh, must we must remember the lessons of the stuff <laughs> if we are to succeed around dairy products." <laughs> you know, I'd like to at that point, and I, I don't, I don't think we even went in on it, so none of that money is mine. But I would still like you to hire an assistant for me at that point. I'd do it. Okay. Mainly to just like pick things up off the floor that I drop, or like when I have to like bend down, <laughs> do things, How awkward, plug if, things in or yes, unplug things. That's mostly I what I don't like doing. If we all won the Mega Millions, and you're like Powerball. the only one of Powerball. our friends, whatever it is, is a bunch of money from gambling, <laughs> and you're the only one who didn't like that would be the most awkward fucking thing in the world where we'd be like, I'm a billionaire now, and Kelly didn't yeah. play. And say, so, hey, Kelly, we're going on vacation again. You want to come? Well, you're not all going to be billionaires. It's only 1.6. Yeah. How many of us are participating? 1.6 billion people. About like 10, I think. We'll be dollionaires. <laughs> but Kelly, you know what I did? I what? poured a Monica and put you guys in already. Oh, there you go. Well, all right. Well, then I can hire my own assistant. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for so saving now you can... us from that awkward thing I was worried about when we're all billionaires. <laughs> So now you can live in my uh, my hand shaped mansion, Kelly. Yeah. Thank you. I can't wait. You can live in the thumb. Can we make sure I'm Kelly the- gets his money just a little after we do, so we can call him new money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love being I love being nouveau riche. <laughs> there have been a few times in my life where I let myself. What if you know when they, these big ones come around and like you're in a big office pool or whatever, and you're like, what if? It's fun. Um, but yeah, it's not going to happen. So, okay. You have a With that certain, attitude. Well, all right. But to me, this is how my superstitious ass works. Um, it's, 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 it's a deep part of my anxiety, but like, what do I want more right now? What do I want to push my energy toward my luck towards, um, winning this money mm-hmm. or not crying at the end of tomorrow election day. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, which one do I want to do? That's I'll take the money. Let's fucking go. Trying to make deals with uh with God with right the devil now. or the devil with Legba. The devil. Legba. Papa Legba. I'll Legba. Crossroads. Yeah, we'll go to the crossroads. Honestly, if I won the lottery, my life wouldn't change that much. I would just never cook again. There you go. You really? hire a chef. <laughs> yeah, I would just buy the best fucking meat in the world. I'd still cook it because I'm getting pickier the more I cook. I'm like, I just want. I just want to eat everything. I'm gonna have that so um, hungry chair from Wally built for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a floating chair, so yeah. you become uh, six hundred, six thousand pounds. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't a, have to move. A huge guitar collection and an icy machine. <laughs> and you'd be like uh, you'd be like Richie Rich. Yeah. And oh, machine. and a Dragon Slayer uh, arcade cabinet. Yeah, yeah, you got to get one of those. Don't forget, you got to get like the R two D two soda cooler. Got to do that. Got to get a ski ball machine. Yeah, I uh, agree. Let's see what else. I I mean, like, I take care of my family, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but the nice things I'm going to do for myself are going to be cool. Um, yeah. I'm going to have a house with a playroom with all '80s toys in it. Where grown men can come over in their pajamas mm. and play toys. <laughs> oh my god! I want the house that uh, Francis had in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, you know the 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 bathtub that's a pool, but that's on the second floor for some reason. It was pretty cool. Remember when uh, Pee Wee gave uh, gave him black gum? He I do his, remember that. His teeth black. He was yeah. pretty mad you about it. Remember that? It was and pretty funny though. Gum. The mm-hmm. spicy gum that uh, made his dad scream. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that garlic gum. It'll do it. You really got him. Oh, did you hear my stomach? I did hear it. Let's you, not talk about you. Well, you said garlic gum, anymore. and I was like, mm, garlic gum sounds good right now. 
I'm that hungry. So I did something today mm-hmm. that nobody thinks is a big deal but me. I think it's a big deal. Hmm. No, I get what it when I tell you I quit Twitter. That's a big no, deal. For, for I you, think that's, that's a, a very deal. big deal. You at least love Twitter. Who doesn't think that's a big deal? Well, in the grand scheme of things, who gives a fuck? But it's a big deal for me because I think, you know, I had a I had a connection to the app. I liked the app. I was probably addicted to the app. Right? But Yeah. It, Can you rephrase that? The word app is really making me hungry. Appetizers. <laughs> steak. Appetizers. Butter, and jelly sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Oatmeal. I don't know. I'm just thinking of food. Uh, I, uh, I, yeah. Know. Oatmeal as an appetizer? Ew. I love oatmeal, man. Just any kind of food. What were you going to say, Kelly? Yeah. Well, I was just uh, going to encourage you to continue because I do understand that's a big deal for you. And it, it it does matter in the grand scheme because in my grand scheme, all you know, you guys are what matters. So, right. uh, so it does matter. That's, that's a no, big I, deal. Yeah. I mean, it does matter because you're not the a high user like you are. You're not the only one leaving. And if enough people leave, then ethic is going to show you know, Musk that he can't just do what he wants with this platform. Like telling people to vote Republican today. Yes, exactly. Like not for any good reason, but simply saying, well, the president is a Democrat, so it'd be real cool. If we had a Republican Congress so they can balance each other out. No, no, no fuck no, no, that. No, no. He's like, he's like, he's like one of the guys. I want well, just uh, playing both. I'm just like uh, being yeah. impartial while you're being partial. <laughs> As as if he's not even from here. He's is not he? even from here. Mm-mm. Don't talk. Don't 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 try to influence things here, the sir. Day before the election, he tweets this, and it's just as if the Republicans are just as reasonable as the Democrats. And you, whatever you want about your conservatism and your financial blah blahs and your social blah blahs, those people are fucking nuts. They can't oh. get anywhere near our democracy, and it survive. Done. This uh, Done. this uh, this is a money thing. Someone I believe yeah. paid for this to happen, and uh, yeah, it's because the Democrats want to put like a billionaire tax, and he's going to hit uh, Musk hard. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I don't want to bring politics in the show because I know people come here for an escape or whatever. Oh, no, they know what they're in for. But just know that, like, this is if, if I, it's a big deal for me because I think I'm I'm you know. I don't like to say it. You can hear me humming and hawing, but I was probably addicted to it. And I feel like I'm missing something right now. I completely agree. Um, I, uh, I, I wondered how long you might, how long am I last? How, how long you might hang. And uh, so I, I'm very, uh, that's a big deal, man. You're going to be all right. I'm going to be fine. You know, I'm not much of a participator. I'll be better on discord. Now our discord is available to our patrons. It's the best social media platform I'm a part of. Yeah. I agree. You know, we've got my Instagram. Easily. If you want to follow me on a social media, it's Instagram, Amy and OTLP. But like, I don't know how to use TikTok. I'll give it a go, I guess. I don't have to have social media, but I also don't want you don't to have be to have TikTok. a dusty old woman as I'm nearing menopause that doesn't I don't understand have TikTok. any social media. I know. I don't want to be dusty. You're not dusty. I've been mostly, you have a podcast. mostly quiet because I'm, I'm He's eating yogurt. I'm eating yogurt, but also I'm kind of feel like I'm hostage to now that I'm self-employed. I have to have all these channels available to me. Yeah. You're hostage to it. So it's like, it's a really awkward position to be in where I'm like, come on, Elon Musk, shut the fuck up and just do. If you're such a great businessman, why are you out here tinkering with this? Oh, he's thing? not a don't, put that out there like he's a great business no man. no he thinks he is a great businessman i'm saying that if he oh, is, you're just yeah you're just like, feeding into his ego i'm just saying like if he is like why why is this tanking so badly like if he's such this this fucking ingenue or whatever it, the fucking word is it was underlined to me today how there aren't really that many twitter users you guys don't use it <coughs> i mean i use it for the show it. account that's right. it right yeah. The show like will say, we're, on it. Yeah, we're hostage to it because we have to use it for the show. I'm not going to say take NOTLP off off Twitter. Um, I couldn't participate in any, in it anymore. It's completely different. But you know, oh, I never, I never do anyway. I'm I'm in a work meeting this morning, 
and we were talking about some of the difficulties we're having with Facebook as a fucking ads platform could eat my entire asshole. Just FYI, fuck all the way off. The whole thing. But mm-hmm. I make a joke. Well, you know, because Meta's not doing great right now. I'm like, well, maybe we could switch some of our social media ad dollars over to Twitter. It's probably a fucking fire sale over there right now. And everybody looks at me like, what? Yeah. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. So I'm just in this weird little place on the internet and nobody really cares that's out in the real world. Yeah, D- does, that's true. Does that make you feel better or worse? I was like, about Amy, it? go fucking touch grass. Yeah, we just need to go out and touch some fucking grass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta tell you, you can. I it's uh, well, I'm not trying to tell anybody. I just you, I it's it, it will be easier than you think. I don't use social media very much anymore. I I do use mine. Um, what when I have something to to promote, I will make a post. Um. I will occasionally comment on people's posts, but like I, I find now I really only engage or I only post when I want to. And I don't feel any pressure to tell anyone what I'm doing or what I'm thinking and be, you can lurk and find those same probably channels. um, Amy, maybe not as quickly, although something I'm sure will pop up. I'm a big hardcore lurker. I'm I'm not a big participator, but I need, my thing is I want to know what's going on. Yeah. You still got the news. You're going to be okay. <laughs> Just one hour of Lester hold a night. Is it going to be until, enough? Until, until we realize that the corporate overlords are just controlling, it's, man, the fucking lizard people are controlling everything you see anyway, man. It's a weird pathetic feeling I had today. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, Hey man, I think everybody has anxiety, like especially leading up to tomorrow is going to be, <sighs> tough Scary. for a while um like i said like i don't want a game i don't want to get political on the show but just please vote blue, blue if you could if you're an american listening to this please god you know here's like here's the thing like people act people who like like people who vote blue aren't worried about the economy too we're not or we're not worried about um gas prices i have to worry about that on top mm-hmm. of potentially losing my rights yeah. Yeah. and Amy is potentially losing her you know, yeah. bodily autonomy. Yeah. We have to worry about those things on top of everything else. So it's a privilege to only worry about inflation and gas prices. So That's right. just please think about other people. Yeah. And think to yourself this, I'm a Republican. I'm going to vote for a Republican. Um, is this a Republican that's denying the election results in 2020? And if they are, just make another choice. At the very least, can you do that? Yeah, yeah don't yeah. be part of a, of the end of democracy. Because <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. that's like a that whole concept that we could literally be destroying the republic right now um, because of one person's ego is so astounding to me. Oh, and it's not... It's, He's the, okay. I'm going to tell a story that happened to me today. Um, I went to Speedway to get the lottery tickets, and the cashier called me up. and I guess I just walked in on her conversation and I heard the tail end of it. And she says something to her coworker, something along, along the lines of, like, I don't know, I just believe you can't speak the language, get out. And then she said, um, I don't want to have to learn Spanish. And then she took a pause. And then looked at me and said, or Japanese. <laughs> oh, shit. Because I, I have no intention of visiting those countries. And it's, I'm not saying like voting blue is going to solve this. But voting red is emboldening these people mm-hmm. out there. Damn. And He's not even Japanese listener. He's Chinese. Yeah, exactly. Um, Chinese American. So, and like I, like I said. Um, God damn. I don't know if like. It sounds like a small thing, but to me, it was huge. That's a huge. That's a yes. that's a big. I can't and like that's I, a, sh- a little shocking. Yeah, to hear. and I just walked out because I didn't want to give her my energy. But then I thought about it. Like, should I have said something? So on top of worrying about, is either I confront her and waste my energy, or not confront her and think about it and also waste my energy? So she put me in a situation right. where I had no choice to but to think about it mm-hmm. and be yeah. confronted with it. Well, now you got to tell us about it and everyone else. So you, you know, yeah, so, uh, so, you made the right choice, I think. Fuck yeah, that this, bitch first. So like, I'm just saying. What a piece of shit. She is in, like part of the problem. 
there are so many, I see so many, these fucking like fuck Biden stickers and Mm -hmm. other things around us. And it's just emboldening these people and making, saying that it's okay, that what you're doing is, is okay. It's creepy. Yeah. It and just re- feels like it feels so antic. It just doesn't feel we shouldn't still be here. How are we still doing the same shit? When I, I would say too, it, it's not just about one person's ego. This, that was a way to open the door for what, for what that, that entity, that group of people as an entity have been trying to do for mm-hmm. years and years and years and years and years because it opens the way for just un, well, you know, for fascism. So, um, I, I think that even it's, 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 it's so much bigger than Donald Trump being president. Even it's, it, it is very important that, that we, you know, we stop it now. Yeah. The trend that, and, and you know, I didn't mean to minimize it when I said earlier is for one man's ego, but I think, but that, I know, I, I you oh, know, no, you no, but yeah, it's the thing is there's that ripple effect. It starts as, this guy who is getting people, these very select group of people, what they want. And then it becomes about so much more. Yeah. It becomes all of a sudden you're dealing with what every great society dealt with right before they collapsed, which is some figure, you know, figurehead who had, you know, rest had to rest control from a system that was already established. And that's the thing that's really freaks me out about it is this idea that it's that they're have given up on the system itself. If you give up on the system Mm -hmm. at this point, you're giving up on half of the population. You're saying that what half of the population feels is just not valid at all. And that's scary as shit. Like you, it's like, you, you know, it's don't they teach that whole, you can please some of the people all the time all the people some of the time to kids anymore or, or, or like, is that even like part of anybody's idea? Any more compromise or, or Listen, accepting the children outcomes? are too busy using litter boxes in their classrooms. So <laughs> they don't want and the TikToks and their and the TikToks. TikToks. <laughs> okay. That was what hot chip Joe Rogan hot chip. What was the deal with this? The litter box thing. I, I missed the story. It's I saw just, it. It. just Google it later. Yeah, right. I don't really care. <laughs> I was just making small talk. <laughs> You're just making small talk. <laughs> just making small talk. Um, I'm so All right, sorry. Everybody, yeah, everybody step off their set boxes now and don't trip over that. Insane. Uh, Patreon.com slash. Oh, shit. Sorry. N-O-T-L-P. I thought it was my cue. <laughs> Patreon.com slash NOTLP if you want to do that. Um, we just recorded Origins, so that'll be out. We got Top of Canis coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. More content that's available to you versus Patreon, Jason. the Discord. Uh, you yeah. could have gotten rich with us Guess today, but one. you didn't. Yeah. You have to get rich on your own. You, get rich you on could your have own. been a dollionaire. Yep. That's all. Now we can go. Okay. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. <laughs> What's on the agenda today? My eyes are closed. Like every day. What are you doing in my room? Hunting vampires. Vampire hunting is a business. Cut next and cash your checks. Well, things have changed since you got your ass kicked out the union. If I don't come up with 10K, my wife and my daughter are going to move to Florida. Hi, Dad. You're late again. And the union is the only place that could give me that kind of money. Your record is chock full of incidents. 
But he's a new man. One last chance. This is your final warning. Just keep crying. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Vampires just tried to kill me. And now I just pissed my favorite fucking Hey, hey, hey everybody pisses themselves the first time. Uh, really? Yeah. Did yeah. you? No, I no, no, I didn't, but but listen, you did. You know what I see when I see a vamp? Big old dollar sign. Hey, hey, don't you puke in here. I swallowed it. Locked and loaded. Doggy dog in the motherfucking Vampires. They're the most. And all they are is murderers. It's not Eclipse, New Moon, Breaking Dawn, Point One. It ain't like that, all right? Why do you know the names to all the specific Twilight films? What? And what's your gripe with Breaking Dawn Part Two? It's the exciting conclusion of the whole Twilight saga. Welcome to the day shift, motherfucker. <laughs> Works every time. Y'all. So vampires. That, you can't, did you notice the intro to the roulette was slightly different? That's because I accidentally clicked on the blooper reel from the other guys uh, with Will Ferrell and uh, oh, okay. Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg so. I, did, I did catch that. <laughs> Whoops. I'm sorry. I'm playing slop tonight. Who is your own blooper? Yep. Bleeps and bloopers. Um, okay. Day Shift is the name of the movie. It's on Netflix. Stars Jamie Foxx, Dave Franco, Peter Storm. Air, Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah. Um, loved this movie. It is a recommend. It's not going to change your life. It is, you know, those little like meringue bites, you know, like these little just like meringues and you put them in your mouth and they melt mm. on your tongue and they're kind of hollow and they're delicious. Mm. But what? It lasts a second and they're gone. Mm -hmm. this, that's this yeah. movie. It's wonderful. This movie yeah. did his, it, it did its job. It didn't give you any vitamins. Although yeah. or minerals, but those actions, good. the fight sequences in this, I think are so good. There's, they're very good. The movie was directed yeah. by a stunt supervisor, like a stunt guy. Yeah. So here's the thing. I always say like the, the best thing a movie can do is entertain you. And if you are, it sounds like you're entertained. Very entertained. Um, it, this movie is just bad boys are sort of, you know, Mm -hmm. Seems very like '90s or early 2000s. Yeah, it's just very bright and shiny. It's very um. All right, so like Jamie Fox is he's a single dad, not a single yeah, dad. Course. I mean, he's got a there's a mother in the picture, but they're divorced, and he's trying to you know do that thing and you know keep everybody happy. Very Ant Man, mm -hmm. but he's like kind of you know what's the word I want evasive when his ex-wife is asking him. So like, why were you late? Where were you? Why couldn't I get a hold of you? What's going on? And he's like, Oh, you know, nothing. He's a vampire hunter. You guys, mm. that's why you can't well, tell her anything. Well, sometimes, you know, you don't want to tell your ex-wife anything when they ask well, you shit true. because it's none of their goddamn business. I think these two were still kind of, I understand. Like I was, other. I just being a silly. You're just being a silly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So she doesn't know anything about it. Daughter doesn't know anything about it. She just thinks she's got a cool ass dad. Well, it turns out mom is like, listen, I'd, I want to sell this house. We live in San Diego. I want to leave and go be with my mom and she can help me with the kid and blah, blah, blah. But she's in Florida and Jamie Foxx is like, Ooh. I don't want you to do that. And it's like, well, why couldn't you move? But whatever, you know, Hey, that is not what we're doing here in this movie. We're not having serious family discussions. He, he had his cover though. His pool boy cover. He's a, he looks like a pool man. And if he left LA to go to have, Florida, to go to Florida, he'd have to come up with a whole different cover. They right? don't have pools. They don't there. have swimming pools in Florida. Not like in uh, California. They have different uh, kinds of pools. Yeah. I was making, well, I was being facetious. I can't think of a single reason he couldn't leave. Um, there is no reason <laughs> unless it's because it's like the, his, the council that he has been disavowed from of vampire hunters is local. It's a union. The union. I mean, it's literally like a union. Um, it's his contract. Yeah. But see, he got kind of like <coughs> kicked out of the union cause he doesn't play by the rules. 
He's a loose oh, cannon. Loose he's cannon. a. Would you say he's a bad boy? He's a, he's bad, a bad boy bad, for bad life. Boy. For life. Okay. But now he needs money, and only the union's going to pay him the money that he he needs. Mm. So he, he needs dental. Remember? Yeah, because his daughter needs braces. Um, mm-hmm. So he calls up Snoop Dogg, who's like a big time vampire hunter, very well respected at the union. Sure. To help him, you know, get back in and make some money. And then they team up Jamie Foxx with Dave Franco as his like observer for his probationary period. And Dave Franco is like a little office nerd that's never been out in the field, has never seen a real vampire, has never killed one. Uh, Or, you know, it's a little bit like... um, Split second. And... um, John Carpenter's vampires. It's exactly like John Carpenter. It's like a. <laughs> it is much better than John Carpenter's vampires. Yeah, because I don't like that movie. Um, it's like it, um um the movie uh, with with uh Martin Lawrence and Bad Boys. Big <laughs> Mama's House. No, and uh Tim 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 Robbins. Wasn't that Martin Lawrence and Tim Robbins? The jewel heist thing. The their buddy where he says he's movie. a federale. It's like that don't too. Remember, uh, that's a weird. Like you had to hey. dig deep. <laughs> <laughs> Do what I want. Like you're like it's like that iconic Martin Lawrence movie where um, <laughs> Tim Robbins. You know the one. Yeah, I was just reminded of it watching this. <laughs> it is. It's what's every. It's nothing every to lose. Movie. Thank hey. you. Uh, so if you've seen nothing to lose, you've <laughs> basically seen this basically. movie. Uh, it's any movie where it's dirty. I did dirty Harry start the loose cannon thing. I think it was where it's like, it was where the cop who plays by his own rules. It's that story plus buddy cop movie mashup that they realized by the time lethal weapon was out. Like you can't just have dirty Harry's guy. I have a friend. He's got to have a friend. This guy's too dark. You got to have somebody in there to lighten the tonal load. And that's Dave the Franco. Because there's going to yeah. be a tone, tone load everywhere with the guy. Tone load. Oh, I love him as a rapper. Right? To tone load. Let's do it. Right. <laughs> so if you have like just Funky your dirty Harry, who's a, almost a villain character, man, you got to have your Dave's Franco's. Your Dave's Franco's. Yeah. Um, he's a nerdy because you heard in the trailer he pissed his pants. He pissed his pants. Sure, he pisses his pants. All this shouldn't work. Like he's the priest character from Vampires. Yeah, exactly. I think he's an, he's one of those adorable actors. I love. He's great. I like Dave Franco. I like Dave yeah, Franco. Yeah. Um, the vampires are really cool. Um, they they I think I read in the trivia that they hired out of work Cirque du Soleil artists because it was. You know, COVID, the pandemic was happening, yeah, so they couldn't so they're work. All, they're all bendy. I like they're the, contortionist, acrobatic vampires. It's very cool. They should make a movie about making this movie, and in that scene where they're trying to, they're like, "Well, who we need to round up a team of professional contortionists and clowns to play these vampires," and then you get the Armageddon sequence where they're going around to each one of them, what they're doing during the pandemic, while they're waiting to be reactivated by the Cirque. And like, they could be like, one could be out working on an oil rig and another could be in a jackhammer and stuff. And they're like, but we need you to play vampires. And they're like, we don't want to pay taxes again. So anyway. (laughs) You know, every time I hear Cirque du Soleil, I think of um, Punky Brewster. How come they never did a, how come they never, never did a mashup? They mashed punk, Punky Brewster into the Cirque du Soleil. Is that oh, because of, because of Soleil Moon Fry. Yeah. For yeah. a second, I was like, why? <laughs> I think <laughs> S- S- Soleil Moon, why? <laughs> you so much. So, okay. And maybe. I say Soleil Moon, when I not. That's the difference. Why not? So Jamie Foxx, he's, he's great. Everybody's so great in this movie. It's very silly. It's mm-hmm. an extremely silly movie. It is not trying to stress you out in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's good. Um, How are the effects? Because sometimes Netflix movies can look pretty cheap, but they're pretty good. What I think, I, this movie really works on its fight choreography. I wasn't even really paying attention to effects, to tell you the truth. I think they overused that very saturated, like, California. Yeah, there was a graininess, right? I think that was, was a little I, like, all right, point, we get it. This is a very, you know, California, Southern California movie. 
at a point we, that I way. watched this with Amy and like there was a point where I thought the signal was digitized and I, I don't think it was. I think they added grain to the image somehow. It didn't need it. But the movie's so much fun. I didn't give a shit about any technical shortcomings. I feel like they made this with the intent to put it in theaters. Yeah. I don't know if this was always going to be a Netflix movie. I have no idea. It feels bigger than that just because it's it's the kind of movie I would have wanted to see like on a big screen because it's very colorful. Like there's a great car chase in it with some mm. intense drone work, like really cool shit. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen unless I just assume in every Marvel movie that what I'm seeing is all digital. Snoop is fucking yeah. cool as hell in this movie. Snoop is cool as hell. But you know what? He's looking his age a little. Yeah. But I kind of like an aging Snoop. I do too. I've been thinking that in his uh, in his commercials, his oh. Corona commercials. Oh yeah, is like, he the Corona spokesperson? I've like seen a little gray. That's kind of weird, Some man, because he's more of a weed dude. Like smoking. Maybe it's Jose can't be Cuervo. For you. I'm not sure. It's one. It's See, one of those. Yeah. It's a booze of some kind. Oh. A beer yeah, or a I booze. Think it is Corona. I'm pretty sure. I, I think it's Corona. What talking about. Yeah. yeah. Him and Martha Stewart are getting crossfaded together right now. I bet. Probably. Hmm. Um, day oh shift. yeah, I I thought it was a lot vampires. Of fun. I don't want to tell you too much about the story. I mean, obvious, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's not like it's super. You know, they run afoul of a like very powerful vampire and have to figure yeah, they that shit do. out. Yeah. yeah, it's classic, man. It is a classic. It is everything. There are vampires wearing sunscreen in it, so they can yeah. walk out in the day. It is hilarious. Ooh, yeah, I bla- is blade it up. Silly. It's yeah. super blade. It's actually what I wish Blade had been is day sh- day shift is really fucking fun. I love blade too. The one del Toro did, I think is, is really great, but that first blade always felt a little lacking in parts for me. And this movie is like, man, it's just locked in as far as an action movie. It's, I was, I had so much fun watching this with you, Amy. I'm so glad you got it. I don't know if I would have made time for it otherwise. Yeah, we watched a trailer a little while ago, and I was like, "That looks fun," but like, I'm not gonna yeah. go out of my way. Dave had I recommended did. it before, though. Dave uh, Scarecrow Oven. He he said he really well, I enjoyed can't it. Listen and he's fucking watch. picky too. You know that. See. Sorry, Dave. You're picky. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> all right. That's all. It's a recommend day shift. Oh, all good. Right. All right. For the next week, the movie is called Watcher. It's on Shutter. A young American woman moves with her husband to husband to Bucharest and begins to suspect that a stranger who watches her from the apartment building across the street may be a local serial killer decapitating oh, women. Yeah, the mm-hmm. chick from um, It Follows is in this. Maika yep. Monroe? Yep. Yeah, she's getting, uh, becoming quite the screen queen she is. <laughs> she's great. Well, she is? All right. She is. Ready to see who's going to watch this one? Fuck yeah. It's been and spin and spin and spin. It's going to be Kelly. Hey. Kelly. Congratulations, Aww. Kelly. Who watches Yay. The Watcher, Kelly? You're going to be watching Maika Monroe. Watcher. I'll send it to you. In a little movie. Please do. Called The Watcher. And uh, we'll be back. There's a place where deals are made and legends are born. And there was a kid. They called Lightning Boy. He was searching for the lost song. You could be the first man to record it. For a piece of fame and fortune. Like Clapton did with Crossroads, the Rolling Stones did it with Love in Vain. And he was looking to get him there. Welcome to Bluesville, son. This is the real thing. This ain't no book. Lightning Boy and Blind Dog. What the hell are you guys supposed to be, huh? Both blues man. Hey, well, I'm the blues man. He's from Long Island. Oh, I need a Mississippi string tie. I'm ready to roll. Yeah, you need a lot more than that. You know, the owner walked up to Willie, gave him three $100 bills, and he says, your boy can play. Only one blues man in town tonight. It was me. I'll choke you. Do and you get knocked on your There's a place where deals are made. And you made your deal at the crossroads. Yeah, I made the deal. Oh, I get it. You want some kind of contest, huh? You're a real smart boy. Where a thin line separates the good. I'm giving you all the magic I've got from the great. Louis Brown sent me. Eugene Martone. 
is ready to cross it. Crossroads. The, the, that's a very old trailer. 1986 is when the oh, trailer came out. Man, man, this is so. I I am so glad I never did end up seeing this. I would have loved this, um, but I watched it today for the first time, and it was so awesome. I love this. I will watch this again. Yeah, very it's just good. Yeah, it's very uplifting. It's just a happy movie. Whole, yeah, uh, even when it's dark and sp- yeah. I mean, uh, well, I like how it went dark sometimes. Yeah, like I wasn't expecting that honestly because I was um, thought I was going to go more cheesy eighties. Uh, pretty but, cheesy though. It got there, Andy, but it didn't get to like the uh, points of like you know those bubblegum eighties movies where everything yeah. there was child I, prostitution I, and and stupid in this one. So. Uh, I know what Andy's talking about. Like it definitely had sort of that that eighties uh, su- semi schmaltz, but I but it it stays this side of like the stuff that really pushes it. You know, it's I feel like this is like a normal. This is an acceptable level of eighties schmaltz. It's a it's a it's a Columbia Pictures Journey movie. <laughs> oh, it's Walter oh. Hill. Yeah. So like, if if you yeah. are you Walter Hill's fans, like I don't know. Have you seen the he did the the Warriors? Remember the Warriors? Ah, okay. Um, oh, the war. He, but I tell you what, you pair uh, Ralph Macchio up with an old person of color, mm-hmm. and you got magic. <laughs> you got magic. I thought the same. Thing. You need to. He needs to make a move with Danny Trejo next, and I'll tell you, Ooh. Oscars all around. So the he Walter Not Hill, Hill uh, great director, did the Warriors Forty Eight Hours. Um, oh yeah. And then this was his follow up. Uh, I mean, he did uh, uh, movies in between. He did Brewster's Millions with Richard Pryor, which is a great movie too. Wow, um, he did a lot of stuff. Streets of Fire, yeah, and across all genres. But like the weirder movies, I think are his standouts. Like this one and War- definitely Warriors are, are a couple of uh, standouts. He did um, uh, some episodes of Tales from the Crypt later on. Uh, mm-hmm. But w- he has like this sense of making things just this side of believable. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I this movie that. walked that line. Yeah, I do like, too. It yeah, walked because, that line so well. Cause I feel like a, the cheesy eighties movie, they would have made Papa Legba more over the top and like with the stereotypical with the top hat and the, the skulls and everything. And, you know, they would have made him um, sign the contract in blood that, and it goes up in flames or something. Right. They didn't never did anything like that. I definitely feel like, yeah, I feel like uh, I had the same thought about how there are, there, are, there are movies and there are directors who don't give a shit about like certain little details where it annoys me. But I thought that this was handled so well where like when he breaks this fugitive out of this, like the security is so low there and it's, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it, it could have been a whole, like if, if he pushed Willie out in like a, a wheelchair with like a doctor disguise on or something. <laughs> yeah. That would have been but, more in line with what was going on at the time. That would have gone past it. But, but the way they handled it was really good. And then I like that. We never hear about that again. Kelly. Like we, ne- oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Did you recognize Joe Seneca? Who played Willie from from recently? Remember, you, we watched the Blob recently. It was a yeah. pretty memorable night. Um, oh, he's like the head of the. Uh, yeah, he was the head know, the, uh, of the, the bad guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I wanted to just mention that. That's all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they pl- he his like performance. I was expecting the stereotypical like I don't want like the magical Negro role where he just talks in homilies. But he he was just a regular person, I think. It, he was it wasn't a good like, character, yeah. yeah it he wasn't was a like a regular um, dude. He was kind of a dick. Yeah, and yeah. He was wonderful. Yeah, uh, it, it it was less. It was not insulting in the way like when you think of what you were saying, Andy. That the the trope of in case you don't know and you're listening and you're hearing magical Negro for the first time, that's a movie and TV trope where you have a guy and who. Literary. Is lit and literary, and Stephen King was guilty of it with a few characters, and a lot of big writers are. But like, it's just this perfect apology. It's like, I'm sorry. Here's a character who is a minority, and they're completely perfect, and they're going to give wisdom to this 
white character I've written as the yeah. main character, you know, and that that their only purpose is to help this white character achieve their goal. But Willie has no, his and, own um, thing. Yeah, he has agency. He has yeah. like choice in this. It's not just to serve Ralph Macchio's character. Right. Right. Well, it's because they both have a they have parallel like really the story is his story. Yeah. And and both of their things are sort of parallel and separate. Um at the same, you know, they they are helping each other. Um I and I love like I really do love sort of the the sharp like this this tell like uh yeah. you go ahead. Because I have a thing I'm trying to say, but I have to like I have to lay it out. Oh, and another mind. another part where they did they didn't cross the line to schmaltiness is Ralph Macchio did not end up with Jamie Gertz. Yeah. Right. You know? And she just went on her way. No, he it, he he uh, hit it and quit it. Yeah, and they she made did. her own choice too. Yeah. She has agency too. She's not just there to be a you know side piece for Ralph Macho. I think other '80s movies would have made it like a triumphant return, and um, she would have yep. been on the stage with him yeah. during the guitar battle. Our and guitar what? battles a thing. Uh, yes, Walter Hill. Mm. <laughs> they are does this thing. With the like you were just talking about with Francis, the Jamie Gertz character that I really like, and they let her the two Willie and uh, what's Ralph Macchio? Lightning, character? Lightning, yeah, Kid Lightning or whatever. Lightning uh, boy, yeah. Lightning boy. Yeah, uh, they see Eugene. her. Go, they see her go into a hotel room with this guy who had just been a complete asshole, racist to the both of them, and they are still kind of like she's doing her thing maybe she knows what she's doing like there's a respect like i feel like walter hill had a lot of respect for the rough and tumble like uh you know the tough kind of the fringes right, the fringe the street. yeah the street people like like real well, yeah. lost to goodness like street people you know well yeah he gave like because willie who you know who was a traveling man and and you know was, did time and stuff he he recognized like it was really well played and well written. Whereas, like, he clearly doesn't like to see this young girl, you know, do what she's gonna do. But he also he's like, "Hey, this is a tough world, man. She's doing what she got to do. Right. We're doing what we got to do." And he's trying to, you know, you know. And Ralph Macchio is very green, and he doesn't understand. You know, it's uh, it's good, man. I love, I love how um, they mix in the spookiness like it's really subtle but also really like rich like the first of all the cross it's very pet cemetery to me <laughs> the the crossroads reminds me of the burying ground in the 87 pet cemetery and um there's another line that makes feel that way to me when they go back and he talks to the girl who who you know her grandmother used to own the house when it was a a, a, a brothel and he he asked her about the crossroads. He said, "You know what I'm talking about." Like it's like mm -hmm. an air. Like you get the sense that everybody kind of knows the floor of the area. Yeah, that it is, and like the fear that the actor she gets in her eyes too is a really nice little moment of of acting. And I also I love Ralph Macchio, and I'm going to tell you why. Tell me. I love that when he first starts when like. And I feel this is sort of the same way in Karate Kid. I really compare... This was a very Daniel LaRusso kind of character. Mm -hmm. And I rooted for him in the same way. In that he kind of starts out... You, he, you're you like, he's got a derpy face. Like, he, like this kid's just like a gop mouth, just <laughs> walk around. Like, he doesn't know... <laughs> dick about shit well, he, he, he has his mouth breathing moments yeah and what, know, I, yeah. what makes that so effective Yop that's faced. that great directing again because they you gotta see him through Willie's eyes in the beginning in the first act R you gotta see him as a fucking like wannabe well and this is what's so great about Ralph Macchio because he does he plays that where you almost like it almost looks like he's not a very good actor like because like the character doesn't like the way he kind of works through his dialogue and like his facial expressions it's not till you see him do something like else in the movie like have a different reaction that that's the character like it's a kid that is how 17 year old kids are and then you get to see him like when he's playing guitar and he's like really fucking into it and he's making faces and like hot dog and like mm -hmm. it really brings like you it's a full person like it's it uh i 
cheer during the guitar duel, by the way. Uh, I love seeing Steve Vai get taken down by Delta Blues. <laughs> I'm sure I am absolutely certain that there's some prog rock, people I'm friends with, certainly. Prog rock guitar just snobs who cannot stand the idea that 12 bar Delta Blues would would show up Steve Vai. <laughs> but I love that Steve Vai was up for it. That's he the was. best thing. Is like, and he's so silly. He's also playing, I think his hands are what you see in certain shots when you don't see Ralph Macchio's yeah. face. I think that's Steve Vai too. He's playing both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I it was that's, absolutely played both sides because I don't think any of the audio you hear is coming from Ralph Macchio. Although he well, does sir, work. Sure. He does a great job of aping it though because he's great at fingering. Oh, yeah. he, his fingers go up and down the neck at the right. That's line. what Jamie Gertz said. Or the the, char- <laughs> the character. I do have one pet peeve Who about knows? the guitar scenes with uh Ralph Macchio is you can hear it, Kelly. I know you probably heard it. Like that first scene where he's he's playing the acoustic guitar, but it sounds like a resonator instead. And that just stood out to me. I'm like, why didn't they just give him a resonator if they're going to use nerd? Yeah, this shit's going to. But be. like, um, the, I don't, what do you mean? Or what are you like, talking you about? You know, the metal, like the 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 blues guitars. They don't have the sound hole. They have the metal face under the strings, and they make that real tinny sound. That it's not. It doesn't oh. have that boom of an acoustic guitar. Like, well, that sound. It's like obvious they recorded that instrument, and then they had him pick up a regular acoustic guitar. Well, I definitely knew it was. Yeah, he wasn't. You know that wasn't happening in in right. the moment, it, but um, I I didn't think about what kind of uh, I I definitely get what you mean. I, it was uh, great clearly not acting, but he did great, great finger job. acting. His fingers were in the right places, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, his fingers and his heart, <laughs> and his heart. He's got to be careful. He, he's with a karate. He can he can bust his hands and not play guitar anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, he uh he really portrayed like awkward and naive, but just really trying to like. Just, oh, it was so good, man. I feel like I, I'm not saying anything, but I just really enjoyed it. Like on that, like on the level, I think that it wanted to be enjoyed on. I'm glad you feel that as way a, about it. As a guitar player, you know, someone too, like I love the, the music geekery as someone who is a music geek. Like I really appreciate that character's love of this stuff and trying to meet one of these heroes who lived this life and, you know, he, He's trying to talk to him about shit that, like, you know, you would talk to other music geeks about. It, it, it had this really, like, it just rang really true and kind of um, just seeing how much he loved, all, you know, he cataloged all the, all the, all the blues players and knew, knew his shit. Oh, he had the long game. He got a job as a janitor just to get close to this guy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I love that questy kind of vibe about it's this mythical the thirtieth track that Robert Johnson didn't record, and like yeah. they or was, he did, but it, or, the recording got lost, or the recording got lost, or the even or uh, whether didn't. whether it's the recording or the yeah, music, or like if that. there was a lead sheet for whatever you know, like whatever we were trying to form this song took. That's another part of it that makes it extra mysterious because you're kind of like they're vague about what form the song was yeah. in, you know, at this point. And I love and, that very Holy Grail stuff. Oh, su- yeah, super Holy Grail. But I also like I I don't know about you guys. I felt immediately like obviously there's no song. Like I felt like I knew from the get he was lying about that. But I knew he was telling the truth about who he was. Um, so I, I felt like that was kind of interesting for me to go through it because it wasn't a big deal to me when he said like there is no song because I. I, I was waiting for it. It would have been it. super disappointing if there was a song because nothing, it has to be, again, right. it has yeah. to be right. the Holy Grail. It has to right. be this unattainable thing that you are always, like the whole point of, I love movies like the, about art, like where, yeah. the, where the artist learns that the point is doing the art and there is, it's not about finishing anything. It's not about coming out the other side with this thing that you're like, here's the thing I did. It's about that process. And he learns that through the movie. Yeah. Like it's all those crazy choices that Willie made over his life that made him interesting and made his music interesting. Yeah. And I love, yeah, like back, I wanted to go back to the spooky stuff. I, I love how they handle the demons and sort of the supernatural um characters it's just sort of like i mean you really 
you, you almost, I mean, obviously like you could even argue that they're not at all supernatural, but I, I think that they are. Um, and I love the idea that at the end they're in this bar f- surrounded by devils and hates yeah. and demons in, in the form yeah. of people having this party and just it it's really badass doesn't it feel like a church service but then the guys well, are wearing like those two yeah like oh the seat like the mesh tops. shirts yeah. Yeah. i love that i did too um, it was a I great choice it's, it's it's the dark church yeah and I, I don't mean that i know how i realize how that sounds now you mean um, satanic yes I thank understood you what you meant satanic um the the resolution for willie being if he wins this guitar battle which freddie says is a thing but kelly's like it's not a thing it's totally a thing i, I didn't say it wasn't a well, thing i do like, i've I never don't been know. i've never been involved in a guitar battle um if he if if eugene if Dude, lightning boy wins the, guitar, the like guitar battle and humiliates the current um dude who just sold his soul then willie can just be cool he doesn't have to go to hell yeah he's released very devil went down to georgia it's very easy it's super devil went down to georgia it's so easy it's not complicated Yeah, and at at the end all he does all that papa legbo does is just tear up the contract Mm -hmm. i love it that's such a a small moment like (laughs) other movies they wouldn't have that contract go up in flames or something like that it's such a great moment and also i love this is something I love about gentle TV in the end. Like I really was expecting at the end of this, once his soul was free, I thought Willie was going to die. Right. Like I thought it was going to go out <laughs> on him dying <laughs> I didn't and Ralph Macho having I to, that was and happen. like they didn't do that. They walk off into yeah, the they're... sunset in, in fucking Mississippi. They don't talk about the cops that are probably looking for yeah. him or Mar- Ralph Macchio's parents who are looking mm-hmm. for him or Jamie Gertz, who's probably been murdered by whoever <laughs> picked her up. By a, a dude who picked her up off the side you of the road. You don't think about any it, of it that. It almost feels like they're setting up a sequel in a way, but it's also like that great there and back again. It's like a very Tolkien thing where there is, whether you see them or not, these characters are going back out on adventures together. Yeah. Oh, it, I, almost forgot to mention my Trek nerds the movie opens with robert johnson you know making his deal and going to record a session and i'm like is that motherfucking tuvok it was motherfucking tuvok it was tim ross from voyager he's the best career all over mm-hmm. the and he's charts. a vulcan he's a fucking fantastic vulcan you know it's real mm-hmm. creepy too speaking of the cast members like the guy who played old scratch Oh, the, his, the way he smiled. Well, was so the te- his teeth, my lord. Well, here's the thing: he died the same year they made this movie, and it, he, oh shit, he reminded me of the Reverend from Poltergeist too so much. Like, that yeah, I, did, I was thinking the same thing. For some reason, I was thinking, um, was the uh, Phantasm, but oh, it's oh all yeah. Man. But here's yeah. the yeah. thing: but the, like, the reason I yeah, think the guy it, with yeah, the reason I thought the same thing. It's so creepy though, too, is they both died the same year they made these movies. I, I think they cursed look, movie. No, I just think this is what dying might look like. Like, like I think if you look at that Reverend and him, like they have this Ew, same Freddy. skull. Like, well, it's like it's just his teeth, his shit. mouth. It, it's like if you see like corpses, like their their mouth, the skin yeah. around the mouth is kind of stretched out over it, and they got like giant teeth because the the flesh lying. is kind yeah. of like that's it. Yeah, he looks the, like a walking corpse. And that's no Scary. makeup or anything. They this Robert Judd, you know, there's no he's mysterious too because he's only been in one other film. He has no date of birth listed on IMDb, just the date of death. And uh and the picture is from Crossroads and he's creepy as shit. I bet he was a very kind man. Yeah. We don't know. He could have been doing all kinds of horrible shit. He could shit. have been actually, <laughs> actually <laughs> and I want to say I was expecting a Anthony Michael Hall moment from Weird Science where he's talking like an old black jazz musician well, he did happened, have one. there was one moment where he did it it, yeah. but it wasn't like as egregious as yeah. it was weird science weird. moment Lisa. i'm not sure how i can judge you know? that but it, there was one moment yeah <laughs> Although, but i was expecting I more of that Michael Hall bit. Yeah. it makes me laugh it just comes it's time. just so it's just so weird to me that scene yeah. in weird science yes yeah well it's yes. just fucking hilarious because he's such a geek like it, yeah. it doesn't even feel like it's there to me. There's nothing in that that reads as like offensive. It's just this nerdy kid trying every fucking cool thing he sees to try to be cool. And this is the latest cool thing he saw. And he's like, Lisa, 
Yeah. Kicking me in yet. And he doesn't even sound like he's doing like any type of All ethnic right. well, it's impersonation. Not for you to he's a yeah. big fucking geek. It's hilarious. It is for me to decide when I laugh. <laughs> You're allowed to laugh at it. It makes me laugh. I don't want to feel guilty for laughing Just at Anthony Michael it. Hall. He's funny. You don't have to feel guilty. That's all I have to say about that. Crossroads. Anyway. But if, if this movie just uh, teaches me, like a lot of other 80s movies, to uh, soothe a hostile crowd, all I got to do is be good at instrument or dance. You got to sing the blues. Yeah. yeah. It was ba- Amy, Adventures Amy. and Babysitting, or it was yeah. like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. No one gets out like, of there without singing the blues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or um, like uh, a Bill and Ted's. Like everybody has like a triumphant musical or like art moment where they just went over the crowd. Oh dude, I cheered. Yeah. yeah because I also moment. I also love that it was like the nerdy guitar player coming back and overcoming the like shreddy dude. Like it was just really the cool. Shreddy, shreddy Krueger. <laughs> yeah. It was uh I really loved this movie. This was a cool movie, man. I, I love the way that um Steve Vai like minced out and held the way he did kind of a Mick Jagger kind of Huff, like there was just a very huffy, yeah, like petulant I, way in his I performance. Guess, I really enjoyed. I have to give it to him. I actually thought he did a good job physically of embodying kind of this sort of character that's now beholden and a and sort of a plaything of the powers of darkness, you know, and <laughs> feeling like he's confident. That, you know, he's got the devil behind him and just sort of this sort of, he moved really, really well, I thought, for that role. Like it could have been, again, I feel like it could have gone way cheesier. I was expecting it to go cheesier. Now, some people are going to be like, Kelly, that's pretty cheesy. It is. Yeah. I'm not saying it isn't, Mm -hmm. but I feel like it's appropriate. And I feel like it could have gone inappropriately cheesy. It's a five cheese pizza right now. Yeah, it could have gone like a cheese pizza. It could have gone Howard the Duck route, but they didn't. It could go have that gone way. ridiculous. And it yeah. was just I, I felt like it was a really successful um dual scene. You know, the other thing about dual. Steve Vai, I I'm a fan of Steve Vai, but Big Butt is technically the maybe the best living guitar player technically, but his music has no real soul in it. Like that's the always been missing. Like he he generates tons of albums, he pushes the envelope. He's like it's like that. It's almost, he's like Data on Star Trek. We'll mm-hmm. bring it back to Star Trek since we were already talking about it. You know, Data can do everything, but he he doesn't have a soul. It's just everything is a function. Like, Steve Vai is like that, and for him to play the guy in this story, that makes it so effective that the reason that that uh, Kid Lightning, Lightning, Lightning McQueen, Boy, Lightning McQueen, Kid Lightning McQueen, <laughs> What is it again? Lightning Boy. Lightning, Lightning, Lightning Boy. McQueen. Ka-chow. Chicken Boy. Eugene. Where Eugene beats him only because he has soul. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not his technical playing. It's that he feels what he's playing, you know, and, and but the. And that guy doesn't know, have a soul. Because mm-hmm, he sold it. Right. He has no soul, literally. Not to, no offense to Steve Vai. Again, like, technically awesome, right? He like, doesn't He listen. can do it. But no, I mean, like, just for other people who are fans of Steve Vai, we're right. like, how dare you say he doesn't have soul? I'm nah. like, his stuff is, it's like, it feels like a computer generated a lot of it. But I know thing. he's playing it. Yeah, I, I, it's it's more of, an you know, watching dominoes fall kind of thing for me. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I can't believe, like, when someone builds oh, a yeah, Rube it's Gold, cool. Like a it's, it's a cool technique. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting every so often to see it happen because it's sort of like an ath- athlete, but yeah. it's not really like the kind it's of not, music I want to like musical. Right. jam to. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't stir any feelings in me at all other than wonder uh, at the technique. Like there's no, I'm not going to be moved to tears by anything Steve Vai recorded. And I've listened to a lot of it, you know, like he's just, but I'll listen to so those, many old, chances. those old Robert. No, I still, again, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying joking. to say, well, just looking at both of these styles of music, cause the movie, if the theme is, you know, art has to have a soul to count. You know, like if that's really the theme and the whole point is teaching Eugene how to acquire a soul of quality and a soul that's interesting. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. on this road. And that means suffering through and letting people around you not always being the hero necessarily. Sometimes you're going to be the guy who didn't do anything. You're not going to be the good Samaritan. Like it's Mm -hmm. a deep message. Like in that if you're an artist, like 
it's all about the art. And I love that he, that's the lesson he has to learn. It's not about finding this missing song. It's about finding your ability to create something that means something. Exactly. And it's so heavy. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, and real quick, I want to give a shout out to that, uh, the, the devil would answer at the end. Oh yeah. She was great. I left for freaky movements. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, she was honestly her, that dancing. I feel like it made it seem like there were more people in there. Like, I yeah. feel like the, well, the it, way it, she was it, choreographed the way she made was it moving, seem like there was more happening. Yeah. There. And the way she was moving, it felt like otherworldly. Yeah. Like, like cause they're devil, like they're demons. That's a demon so the, baby. Yeah. The way she was moving, it was almost inhuman. Cause it, it, it's like, she's posing as a, like a human that, and that's how they think humans dance. Yeah. It was, it was, it was super cool. Yeah. It was just so free and like, um, really cool looking. That's a neat. And it's like, on. I think it's a, I think it's a shout out to, um, damn Yankees. Cause that's the, the Lola character. If anybody's familiar with the, uh, the musical damn Yankees. I know of I damn Yankees. Not. I know the band damn Yankees. <laughs> 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 hey, um, so yeah. Andy, that's a really interesting take, though. Like, see, oh, I, I thinking, love it. Yeah. Every time we were talking about, I'd seen this movie as a kid. My my uncle Charlie loved this. Oh my god, my uncle Charles oh my. Loved Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Holy fuck! Yeah, that's a weird coincidence, but um, he he showed it to me because he thought it was the greatest thing ever, and um, I remember thinking that it was a very serious straight movie at the time as a kid it read as a very it was a drama this was a grown-up movie you yeah. know and now i'm watching it with amy i'm like this is fucking batshit crazy like bill and ted's really it's just a little more toned down and i yeah. love that i love that again it's that walter hill shit he makes the, like something that's borderline reality but so also feels post-apocalyptic or otherworldly or whatever it's so great like the bars it, felt like they were in the old west when they're in Mississippi. Like, uh, oh, agreed. It felt like old timey saloons, and it was just very, very cool. And I like that when they left situations behind, they left them behind. Like yeah. the story was always moving forward. Right. It was always moving forward. Things weren't calling back from previous. That you know, like other characters and other scenes were not calling back to complicate muddy shit up. Like it was their story moving forward. It wasn't about him getting caught right. or anyone tracking them down or like any, any him Very dealing Cohen with his brothers and drama with his parents. Right. Like you get enough yeah. where you can tell he doesn't have a great relationship with them, but like, it's not a big thing. It, this is the story. It's su such a focused story. I love it. Do you, have you seen no oh brother where art though? Yes. Do you like that? Yes. Cause this from that's Ish. kind of, it's the same kind of thing where it's always like about the movement of the story and an adventure. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I just think that I do think Walter Hill was a big influence on the Coen brothers and the, and the fact that their movies are like his movies in the respect that they're quest movies. Like, you know, I think I like this yeah. better yeah. than, than Oh brother where are they actually? So like, but uh, don't you love that? Like that, Yes, I, think it I do. Like it. To the nerd and uh, like that hero's journey stuff, where mm -hmm. it's not bogged down in pretense, makes it really no. Fun. And but it has to be done a certain way for me not to need the pretense of re like. I feel like you have to have a deft hand to get me to suspend my disbelief. If you're not going to include a lot of real world, like if you're going to, I don't, I don't, I could go into a whole thing, but I just, I think. This was, it was really like what you said um, about uh, what you just said. What did you just reference? <laughs> I was just talking about the hero's journey type stuff. The hero's where, journey. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Um, I, I think that, that they, people who are good with moving that forward can leave that stuff in the past without it being jarring either where you're like you're not asking like where are the cops or you know why <laughs> well, how are they eating like you're not asking it because they managed to get your mind on other things you know we did those. see him eat too I well, like how did, he, was cut, he was cutting that apple with a knife like a criminal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's how you know he's dangerous if you cut an apple with a knife you're dangerous yeah no uh, you're not talking about where you're just slicing it with that like a Bowie knife almost, and you're yeah. like eating the slices <laughs> off the knife. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that. Sorry about the racket there a second ago. I, I, our food came early. The food came early. It okay. wasn't supposed to be here for oh, another don't you 20 hate. minutes. Where are we? 
Uh, we are about to wrap up, I think, unless anybody has anything else to say about Crossroads. No. no. I, love, I love this movie. Me too. Yeah, it's it was great. delightful. All right. Well, the end of every show, we always say hi to our Bials Bubs. Elise. You'll see you in a minute. Lynn Walsh. Pizza, pizza. Down under. Sorry, Kelly. No, you. I. You know, we don't. I don't want to be beholden to a thing. We're jazzing it Some, up. So Alyssa, sometimes you do. Alyssa, Brandon, and Emily, Jeffel, Doolybop, Dustin, Jizzy uh, Jazz, Iona Goodwin, and a great one, Doctor Brian, Doctor Doo, Diggly Doo, Doo, Jerk, <laughs> Jerk Bitch Boat, Da Da, Beep, Bloop Bloop Bloop, Bill bleep, Farner, Beep Bloop, Blake. I like that improv, that improvisational jazz you're doing. Thank you, Blaine Yogurt. Take it, Kelly. Jordash Jeans. Scat. Oh, I can barely hear his snip snaps, but he's snapping. Paul. Oh, that's good, Scat. Jeremy Cassie and Gamora. Spray that hot scat all over me, Kelly. Ernie. Dave oh, yeah, Siebert. I can't. It's okay. We're fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everybody, Dave Siebert, you're fine. Michael Burns, you are fine. <laughs> Monica, you are fine. Want to switch it up for robot sounds? All right, we're done. Okay. Uh, that's uh, patreon.com slash NOTLP. Anything else? We got. I'll have to find a winner. Yeah. Let me put that on Pick my a winner. List. That's a booger joke. For our next movie. And then Kelly's going to watch that movie, The Watcher. The Watcher, yeah. And we'll watch All right. All right. Hey. Thanks. Good night, guys. Uh, bye. Frankenstein was wondering if he should go to bed.